Hello everyone. Hello. First of all, I just want to say a big apologies that we've not been able to do videos for about three to four months now. It wasn't intentional. We just had some retreats and some family responsibilities as well as some travel that we had to do as a family. So, so we we carried on just doing only the Facebook ones where we just did our daily posts. So apologies for that. Hopefully we'll be able to do more videos from now on. So maybe we have been calling saying, what's happening to Digging Deeper? Are you guys still on? Yes, we are still on. So many blessings came out of this silent period where we have actually spent time retreating. And we believe God that very soon we will bring you so many surprises, especially our first surprise that is coming this Christmas. So watch out. We'll be having um, another surprise that I'll tell you in another video. So today, I just want to do a reflection on something the Lord has been laying in my heart. I like to do a reflection on taking personal responsibility. Taking personal responsibility. You know, in our generation now, denial of personal responsibility is becoming a, a moral epidemic. Nobody wants to take responsibilities. We see fathers abandoning women with children so they can be free and live lives without responsibilities. We see students wanting the best results without working hard. And what do they do when the result comes out? They blame the teachers. We see people even wanting easier work with more higher wages. They, don't, they just want everything to be in rosy, rosy without taking responsibility. In fact, the list is endless what we are all willing to do to shy away from our responsibilities. But the Bible is very clear that each and every human being is responsible for their own decisions, their behavior, and they will be held accountable for what they did. We are responsible to God and the Bible tells us that God will judge the living and the dead based on the things that we have been assigned the things we've been giving responsibility over in our lifetime. So what does the Bible say about taking personal responsibility? Once again, I'd like to say that the Bible is very clear that each and every human being is responsible for their own decisions, their own behavior, and even relationships. We are accountable to each other and to our society for how we conduct ourselves. But most importantly, we are accountable to God. Who will judge the living and the dead. So let's look at what the Bible says about taking personal responsibilities. I just want us to keep our Bible handy. So we're going to look at Numbers. We're going to look at Numbers chapter 1 first. Numbers chapter 1 from verse 50 to 51. We're just going to read a part of that. You can read the rest later. The first thing we observe about personal responsibility in our own life is that some of our responsibility may actually be boring. That's the first thing I would like us to see from this scripture that we're going to read. I just want us to read some parts of it. It says, whenever the tabernacle is moved, the Levites will take it down and set it up again. Imagine that. Just setting up things and, and when it's moved, you just come and arrange things. It's like arranging a hall after there has been a party. And it's always your job to come and do that. That's what these Levites were asked to do. The Levites just were to set things up after it has moved. Although this job may seem boring, it was actually important to God. And they needed to fulfill it wholeheartedly. So, when we do boring jobs, in quotes, they are, they are still our responsibility. And if we're able to carry it out, it shows that we care about doing our job well and completing a task. Like we women, some of our jobs is to cook. We see ourselves cooking and then the fact that we cook today doesn't mean we won't cook tomorrow. We keep doing it. And sometimes it might be actually boring if you don't. It might be not just the job you fancy to do. If you don't like cooking especially, what will happen? But God expects us to take responsibility. 
The Bible also shows us that we are responsible for our own behavior and will bear the consequences of it now and in eternity. Remember that you can't ignore God and get away with it. As we see in Galatians 6, where the Bible says that we will reap what we sow. Unfortunately, we tend to blame others for issues we should be sharing or taking responsibility for. You remember Adam's first response when God confronted him for his sin was to shift the blame to someone else, his wife. God does not accept blame shifting. We are responsible for our own choices and our decisions. Let's look at a few scriptures. First of all, let us look at Matthew 27 verse 24. Matthew 27 verse 24. So he sent for a bowl of water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I'm innocent of the blood of this man. The responsibility is yours. Can you imagine that? In attempting to avoid his own responsibility, Pilate condemned Jesus to death. But by doing this, he actually condemned himself because he was shying away from responsibility. Trying to avoid responsibility to only lead to trouble in our lives. Why is it important for us to have this character trait called responsibility? Why, is, why does the Lord want us to take responsibility. The first thing from reading the scripture, we're going to read a few scriptures, but the first thing I see in scripture about responsibility is that when we take responsibility, it will open door for opportunities. If we are responsible with what we've been given, greater opportunities will be, will be what? Made available to us. It will start coming our ways. Let, let's just read Genesis 39 from verse 2 to 3. Genesis 39, 2 to 3. The Lord was with Joseph, so he succeeded in everything he did as he served in the home of his Egyptian master. Potiphar noticed this and realized that the Lord was with Joseph, giving him success in everything he did. Wow. Let, let's just jump again to Genesis 41, verse 41. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the entire land of Egypt. You see, first of all, there was an observation about Joseph and his ability to take responsibility and do things properly in that house. Then Pharaoh promoted him later. We see that because he succeeded in Potiphar's house, what happened later in the next chapter, in the next few chapters, we observe that what happened Joseph had moved from just being in a, a servant boy to becoming in charge of the whole country. He started running the affairs in the whole country for just taking that little responsibility. So what are some of the things that the Lord expects us to take responsibility for in the Bible? First of all, I would just want us to read John 12, 40, 48. John 12, 48. I want us to read that. John 12, 48 says, But all who reject me and my message will be judged at the day of judgment by the truth I have spoken. This is the words of Jesus. We are responsible for how we respond to Jesus and his message of salvation. We are responsible. God is going to hold us accountable whether we reject him or accept him on judgment day. That's one of the things that the Bible says we'll be clearly responsible for. Let's see a few other things we'll be responsible for. Let's read Genesis 43, verse 8 to 9. Judah said to his father, send the boy with me. I'll just jump a few, a few verses and just read. It says, I personally guarantee his safety. If I don't bring him back to you, then let me bear the blame for it forever. You see, this was Judah saying that he will be responsible for bringing Benjamin back to you. Joseph. You can read the story for yourself later. But the point is, here Judah was responsible for keeping his promises and he took personal responsibility for that fact because he wanted to keep his promise. So we are responsible. One of the things we've just looked at is that we're first of all responsible for our response to Christ and his message of salvation. Then God is still going to help us. We are also responsible for the promises we make. Make to others and make to the Lord. We are responsible for that. So people are depending on us to keep our promises when we've made it. Let's look at another thing in Genesis 21 verse 19. 
This is all about an injured person. He said, if he is later able to walk outside again, even with a clutch, the assailant will not be punished, but must compensate his victim for lost wages and provide for his full recovery. If the injured person is later able to walk again, even with a clutch, the assailant will be innocent. Nonetheless, the assailant must pay for time loss because of the injury and must pay for the medical expenses. Wow. You see, the Bible is telling us here that we are responsible for compensating others when we've caused them some form of injury or harm. Even if it's by accident, we're actually responsible. So when we hurt others, it's our responsibility to try to make amends. Some of the things we do to others might be a kind of permanent damage that, or it might be an accident, but the Lord still takes, expects us to take responsibility, not just by saying you're sorry, but doing what you can to make the situation a bit easier for that person. Look at the Bible is saying here that they even need to cover the cost of the wages that they have lost. You see, God that we serve is a very just God and he knows what he's saying. I just want a few other scriptures that will show us some of the things we are responsible with. Matthew 12, 30 or 7 says, The words you say will either acquit you or condemn you. Can you imagine that? We are actually responsible for the words we speak. So we, are, we have to take personal responsibility for what we say to people, how we say it. 1 Kings 1, 6. I just want us to read that as well. He said, now his father, King David, has never disciplined him at any time, even by asking, what are you doing? This is the story of Ad Adonijah, one of David's sons, who wanted to take the throne away from Solomon. You can read that in 1 Kings chapter 1. The point here is that David never disciplined this son. And that was the Bible was careful to acknowledge that because he was never disciplined is why he was beginning to misbehave. So we are also responsible for disciplining our children. Those that God has kept into our care, we are actually responsible for that. But I'm sure you'll be wondering, if I'm responsible for all these things, how am I going to take, how can I take responsibility or how can I develop responsibility or how can I start becoming responsible? You know, one of the first things I observe in scripture is that how to become responsible is first of all to start doing little things first and being faithful with those little things. Let's just look at Matthew 25. Matthew 25, I'm just going to read. The servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of gold said, Sir, you gave me five bags of gold to invest and I have doubled the amount. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. Now I will give you more responsibilities. Did you see that? Did you see that? You can read that full story. But the point is that because this servant was able to manage five, the Lord was giving him more responsibility. I just want us to also go to Romans 12, 3 and just see. As God's messenger, I give each of you this warning. Be honest in your estimate of yourself, measuring your value by how much faith God has given you. You know, another key way to develop responsibility is to understand that we should be assessing what we can handle at every given time. If we, if we take on too much, then we don't do it very well. And that's when we start getting stressed and we beca start becoming a little bit irresponsible. But we have to judge, what can I be responsible for at a certain time? I'm not saying you should shy away, but the Bible is clearly telling us in Romans 12 here that we need to estimate and evaluate ourselves and see what we can actually handle. And not, to, not for us to be kind of honest with what we can manage and what we can handle and not to think so highly of ourselves that we can we can handle so much when we are only able to do a few things well so we are responsible for assessing how much we can handle and not taking on more than we can actually do well yeah i hope that point is is getting home as well another thing about how we can develop responsible traits in our personal life is to understand that God will train us to be more responsible. I just want to show you a, a few scriptures. If you turn to Proverbs 3, 11 to 12, it says, my child, don't ignore it when the Lord disciplines you. 
Don't be discouraged when he corrects you. For the Lord corrects those he loves, just as a father corrects a child whom he delights. Did you see that? I just want to support that with another scripture in Hebrews 12, 11. Hebrews 12, 11. It says, no discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. It is painful, but afterwards there will be a quiet habit of right living for those who are trained in this way. Do you see that? God will train us to be more responsible if we are submit to his discipline and let him work in our hearts and our lives. That's how, that's how we start becoming more able to take responsibility. When we allow the Lord to discipline us, God will place people in our lives, maybe they are our parents or our Christian parents or mentors, to help to discipline and correct some excesses. And that way we'll be able to take personal responsibility. You know, so I just want us to move on. And just explore one more thing. Now, should I be held responsible for something if it's not my fault? Let's see a few scriptures of people who felt it was not their fault. I just want us to read some scriptures. It's, it's some interesting read. Now, let's open to Genesis chapter 3 from verse 12 to 13. It said, yes, Adam admitted, but it was the woman you gave me who brought me the fruit and I ate it. Then the Lord God asked the woman, how could you do such a thing? The serpent tricked me, she replied. That's why I ate it. This is interesting. Adam blames Eve and Eve blames the serpent. Now, let, let, let's just hold it there and read a few more scriptures. I want us to turn to Genesis chapter 16 verse 5. Then Sarah said to Abraham, it's all your fault. Now, this servant of mine is pregnant and she def despises me though i myself gave her the privilege of sleeping with you the lord will make you pay for doing this to me do you see this one is even more interesting because sarah is blaming abraham for the house girl that got pregnant whereas she was the one that told abraham to do it can you imagine that now i just i just want to read four scriptures before we look at this thing it's not my fault should i be held responsible that's what we are exploring now Exodus 32 verse 22 to 24. I'll just rush through some of these scriptures. You can read them gently. So because of our time, I'll just rush through some of them. And I'll, I hope you can find time in your own quiet time to read it. Don't get upset, sir, Aaron replied. You yourself know these people and what a wicked bunch they are. They said to me, make us some gods to lead us. For something has happened to this man, Moses, who led us out of Egypt. So I told them, bring me your gold earrings. When they brought them to me, I threw them into the fire and out came this calf. Can you imagine that? This is Aaron actually blaming the people for making a golden calf. He said, when they brought these things to me, I threw them into the fire. Yeah. And out came a calf as, as, as in to say he was not responsible. It's not my fault. It sounds familiar, doesn't it? Now, let's look at one more before we just look at this a bit more closely. And I just want you to turn to Matthew 27 verse 24. It says, Pilate saw that he wasn't getting anywhere and that a riot was developing. So he sent for a bowl of water and washed his hands before the crowd saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. The responsibility is yours. This is completely depressing. For each of these four scriptures we've read, none of these people considered themselves to be blamed. They shifted the blame to someone else. It's not my fault, so I shouldn't be held responsible. But the truth is that an, an honest and humble assessment of your behavior may actually show you that you are actually responsible for some of these things. Instead of shift blaming to others, you will realize that it's not just those people's fault, but your fault as well. Sarah refused that it was his fault. Adam refused, Eve refused, Pilate refused, and on goes the list. I just think we should pause now. What is going on in your own life? And what are you, how are you assessing the situation? Are you taking personal responsibility in your family? Are you taking personal responsibility for how the mess has happened? Because it looks like so many of us just want to shy away from our share in the responsibility of what is happening. You're a couple, you're thinking that, oh, maybe it's, maybe it's my wife's fault. You have not 
why we're having all this problem. Oh, it's my husband's fault. Or it's my children's fault. Have you actually tried to take some some blame or some or some responsibility of what is happening and just do an honest examination and see that you could actually play a part? You know, one thing I know in scripture is that sometimes it appears that everybody is paying for the sin of others. Like now, a very good example is COVID-19. It started in one town in China and it spread around the whole world. Everybody is affected by one person's action. But the Bible is very clear that God does not judge the evil one with the righteous one. God holds everybody accountable. I just want us to look at two scriptures before we actually round this up. Two scriptures. I want you to go to Deuteronomy 24 verse 16. It says, Parents must not be put to death for the sins of their children, nor children for the sin of their parents. Those deserving to die must be put to death for their own crime. Do you see that? You see what the Lord is saying here? And now let's just look at something similar in Ezekiel chapter 18. I read, then another message came to me from the Lord. Why do you quote these proverbs in the land of Israel? The parents have eaten salt grapes, but their children's mouths pucker at the taste. And surely as I live, says the sovereign Lord, you will not say these proverbs anymore in Israel. For all people are mine to judge, both parents and children alike. And this is my rule. The person who sins will be the one who dies. So you see, in terms of judgment, a person is held responsible only for his or her own sin. God will not punish us or judge us for someone else's sin. But unfortunately, sin has consequences and sometimes it affects us. What somebody does, if, if, if your spouse cheats, it can lead to something like divorce and then, and then the whole family might scatter and then the children will suffer. So the one person's sin now cascades around the whole family. Or... Your government might make a bad decision and it affects everybody's finance. All these things. But when it comes to sin, God holds us individually responsible. And that's why I just want to close with this promise. How can we trust God's promise? Now, I just want to close by telling us one thing that is very important. God has promised that those who take personal responsibility, those who choose to do the right thing, that do, he will reward them. Let's just see these two closing scriptures. Matthew 25, 29. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given. They will have an abundance. But from those who are unfaithful, even what little they have will be taken away. Wow, that is amazing what the Lord is going to do for us. Yeah, God rewards those that are faithful in little things and God even increases them. And now let's look at the last scripture I have today. Numbers 14, 24. He said, But my servant Caleb is different from others. He has remained loyal to me, and I will bring him into the land that he explored. His descendants will receive their full share of the land. Wow. His descendants will... So God is not just going to bless you for taking personal responsibility. He blesses your generation. Those who are clearly innocent, they are not intentionally punished by God. So let's keep taking personal responsibility. God bless you all. Keep digging deeper. Now see you in the next video.